You're listening to the Tapis Paranormal Talking Point Podcast, a show that discusses various aspects of the paranormal world, with paranormal news, ghost stories, interviews, and much more. And without further ado, let's get into some talking points. Hi guys, Scott here from Tepes Paranormal and welcome to the Tepes Paranormal Talking Point Podcast. So today we're going to do something a little bit different to the first episode. I want to talk about the different types of ghosts that fit under the lady banner. So the most common of these you'll probably have heard of is going to be the grey lady or the white lady. Commonly a white lady is a type of ghost that is dressed or seen in white. They tend to be seen in fairly rural areas and are often associated with local legends of tragedy. Generally they're seen in most countries around the world and a lot of the legends are attributed to accidental death, murder or suicide. Uh, Generally there's a lot of betrayal by a husband or fiancé figure as well as some unrequited love. So a couple of popular examples of the white lady include the White Lady of Beeford, East Yorkshire, who resides on the Beeford Strait, a stretch of road. Motorists often report her apparition running across the Beeford Strait towards the junction of North Frodingham. Anecdotal tales also report a cyclist picking up a female hitchhiker on the same stretch of road, and a few miles later, when turning around, the passenger had vanished. Similarly, the ghost of a Pomeroy lady called Matilda, also sometimes called Margaret, is said to haunt Barry Pomeroy Castle, near Totnes in Devon and is seen as a harbinger of death to anyone that sees her in the dungeon of the St. Margaret Tower. She's said to have been starved to death by her sister in that dungeon, and you can see more information about Barry Pomeroy in my Barry Pomeroy episode of the Tapas Paranormal Advent Calendar. White ladies, or ladies in white, are also seen in the United States. A white lady is said to haunt Durand Eastman Park in Rochester, New York. She's also known as the Lady of the Lake, and she wanders the park, obsessively looking for her daughter's body. The daughter was slain by a boyfriend or a group of hoodlums depending on which story you hear and legend has it that the white lady either killed herself in grief or died alone and heartbroken. The white lady is also fairly common in Europe where in Malta for example there's a white lady that resides in Vidala Palace in the small forest of Busquet Rabat. Legend has it that many years ago the niece of Grand Master de Rowan was engaged to be married to a suitor she did not love. Her father told her that she must always do as her fiancé said, and the wedding day soon approached. But just before the ceremony, she committed suicide by jumping off a balcony, and she's seen wearing her wedding gown that she died in. This is why she's known to this day as the White Lady, and it's said that she haunts the Vidala Palace, and many people who attend the August Moon Ball confirm that the apparition does appear. There's also a white woman in the Netherlands. In Charles Fort in Ireland, there's a story of a white lady, the ghost of a young woman that died in her wedding night. Her death was suicide, which followed the death of her husband at the hand of her father. In Hattiesburg, Mississippi, back in the United States, a woman in white is connected with Burnt Bridge Road's history. In the 1970s, a woman was killed in a car accident while crossing a wooden bridge over a small gully. The resulting fire destroyed the bridge, which was later rebuilt in concrete and gave the road its name. The charred and decaying remains of the original bridge can still be seen nearby. And in Dallas, Texas, at White Rock Lake Park, it's reported that the ghost of a 20-year-old woman known as the Lady of White Rock Lake, described as wearing a water-soaked 1930s evening dress who usually appears at night along the roadside of East Lawther Drive. Witnesses claim that this phantom asks to be taken home on Gaston Avenue in Dallas before disappearing in the car during the ride, leaving behind a waterlogged car seat. Legends in the area claim that the woman was a victim of a drowning from a boating accident in the 1930s, and reports of the ghostly encounters of this spirit were published in Dallas area newspapers in the 1960s. Another fairly common story of a lady in white, although in some instances this lady does also wear black, is that of the Mexican tale of La Llorona, the weeping woman. La Llorona is a ghost who roams waterfront areas, mourning her drowned children. So according to the mythology of La Llorona, uh, the legend has a lot of details and variations. In the most typical version of the legend, a beautiful woman named Maria marries a rich ranchero with whom she bears two children. One day, Maria sees her husband with another woman, and in a fit of rage, she drowns their children in the river 
river. She immediately regrets this. Unable to save them and consumed by guilt, she drowns herself as well, but can't enter the afterlife without her children, and so has to search for them for the rest of time. In a lot of common variants of this story, La Llorona includes white dresses, nocturnal wailing, and an association with water. La Llorona is seen most commonly in Mexico, but has also been sighted and reported around the southern areas of the United States, sort of bordering Mexico. And a similar tale of La Llorona is told in Venezuela. Moving on from the white lady, we now have the grey lady. A grey lady spirit is much less common than the white counterpart. However, there seem to be a few prime examples. A grey lady is reported to haunt Rufford Old Hall in Lancashire. There's also a grey lady reported to haunt Theatre Royal in Bath. A grey lady's also been sighted at Fort St. Angelo in Malta. In New Zealand, a grey lady is reported to haunt Cumberland College. And in the United States, a grey lady is reputed to haunt the Old Parsonage in Sims, North Dakota. It's said that Cumberland College's grey lady is that of a spirit from the college's time as a nurse's hostel. And this grey lady is rumoured to have roamed the corridors of Cumberland College, leaving resident students that have encountered her unnerved by the mysterious ghostly presence. One such sighting in 2012 caused so much disruption amongst the students at the college that staff at the college requested the chaplain of the University of Otago come and visit and help alleviate the students' fears. One theory on who this restless spirit may be follows the story of a young mother who gave birth in the psychiatric unit of the now-closed Queen Mary Maternity Hospital, a short distance from the Cumberland College. The story goes that an overly concerned nurse took her newborn baby away from her, claiming she was unfit to be a mother, and tragically, the young and distraught mum died soon after the death of the baby. It's said that her spirit then ventured over the road to the nurse's home in search of the baby, an action the lady has been repeating ever since. This type of haunting is commonly known as a residual haunting, and seems to be a common theme among several grey lady sightings. So once again, moving on from the grey lady, we've got a fairly rare sighting of a coloured lady ghost here. We've got the black lady. Now, the only significant black lady sighting I can find, there are several online, but the main one I can find is the black lady of Bradley Woods. Bradley Woods is in the village of Bradley, Lincolnshire, and is the alleged haunting space of the black lady. Now, eyewitnesses have described the black lady as being young and pretty, around five foot six, dressed in a flowing black cloak and a black hood that obscures her hair but reveals her mournful, pale, tear-soaked face. And according to the legend, she's never harmed anyone and has only ever proved to be pitiful if unnerving to sight. The story is known to have been told for many generations in the area, and it was once used by parents to frighten children. This appears to have been common practice among parents in the area, and children were warned that if they were not safely in bed by a certain time, the black lady will get you. This once again is quite similar to La Llorona, who we spoke about before, in that a lot of parents use La Llorona as a legend to scare children and to get children to do as they're told and to behave. One theory about the black lady of Bradley Woods is that the black lady is the ghost of a nun. She appears dressed in black and at nearby Nun's Thought, where a covenant existed until the Reformation. The theory gives no reason as to why the black lady should have moved from Nunsthorpe to Bradley, which is two miles away, and though she may be dressed in black, few, if any, eyewitnesses have described her appearance matching that of a nun. Another possible theory for the Black Lady of Bradley Woods is that she's a spinster who, at one time, lived a life of isolation in her cottage, in the woods far enough away from the village. If village children had come across a woman living on her own in the woods, who became angry when her privacy and solitude were breached, then imaginary tales of witchcraft could have exaggerated the legend. None of these theories tie in with the folklore. So again, the Black Lady of Bradley Woods is interesting, but not particularly detailed. Next up, we've got the Green Lady. Now, Green Lady ghosts seem to be a fairly common theme in Scotland, mostly around castles. A couple of the examples online listed are the Green Lady of Five, the Green Lady of Ashentully Castle, the Green Lady of Ballindalloch Castle, the Green Lady of the Barony of Ladyland, the Green Lady of Crath's Castle, all of which are in Scotland, and then moving on slightly, the Green Lady of Knock Castle, which is on the Isle of Skye, the Green Lady of Longley in Somerset, and the Green Lady who is seen in Hawaii. Now, many years ago, I visited Longley and was told a story about the Green Lady. The Green Lady, who is sometimes also cited as being a grey lady, is a fairly common story around Longley. One of the common sightings around Longley is that of a yellowy green mist that moves around in videos and films that people have captured of the area. Going back to Scotland, In Ballindalloc Castle, the Green Lady is said to haunt the dining room area. And again, though little is known of these spirits, it seems very interesting. Going to the ghost of the Green Lady in Hawaii, the story 
Valkyrie of the Green Lady is that of a woman who would visit the Gulch of Wahiawa, which also contains the Wahiawa Botanical Garden, with her children. One day while visiting, one of her children became lost and was never found, and the story goes that she still wanders the Gulch looking for her child, and will take any child that she comes across. There have been several reports of seeing a green woman covered in moss or mould wandering the Gulch. Others say the green woman closely resembles that of a Japanese mythological creature called the Kappa. The creature, which is said to resemble a turtle-like humanoid, steals children to feast upon. The last known sighting was said to have happened in the mid to late 1980s, and in modern times, children and teenagers dare each other to run across the bridge that runs over the gulch at night. Much like some of the previous theories, a lot of speculators say that this story was made up to keep children from wandering into the gulch by themselves. Now next up we have a ghost that again seems very rare. This is the Blue Lady, specifically the Blue Lady of Temple Newsom. The Blue Lady of Temple Newsom is a ghost from Leeds, and many people around Leeds know or think they know this story. In schools, the story is often taken a life of its own and evolved into more of an urban myth, and many school children have invented their own stories and even nursery rhymes about this unfortunate young girl, the most common of which being, Blue Lady, Blue Lady, you killed your blue baby. Some believe that if this phrase is repeated three times while looking into a mirror, it will bring catastrophic consequences to the speaker, similarly to that of Bloody Mary. The Blue Lady is probably based on the story of Mary Ingram, the granddaughter of Sir Arthur Ingram, who extensively rebuilt Temple Newsome House in the early 17th century. One day, Mary travelled to a special party at her friend's house in nearby Barrowby. It must have been a very fine occasion, because everyone wore their finest clothes and jewellery. Mary wore her pearls. On the way home on that dark night, her coach was waylaid by highwaymen, who demanded the valuables the travellers were carrying. Mary reluctantly had to give them her pearls. When they arrived home, Mary was of course distraught and inconsolable, but eventually she fell into a troubled sleep. It's said that the next day she woke up and had completely forgotten about what had happened. She went about her business without a care in the world, until that evening when she retired to her room, looked in her jewellery box and cried, Where are my pearls? Where are my beautiful pearls? And it's been rumoured that this trauma caused Mary's spirit to become the Blue Lady, who's been roaming around Temple Newsome. I'm not sure where the baby part comes from, but again, it's very interesting. The last coloured spirit I can find is that of a lady in red. Now, a lady in red, or a red lady, is quite similar to the white lady, but according to legend, is more specifically attributed to a jilted lover, a prostitute killed in a fit of passion, or a woman of vanity, and such a figure is therefore seen as a victim of objectification. In almost all cases, the lady in red is wearing a scarlet or blood-red dress, and has typically been friendly in disposition, with stories attached to hotels, theatres and other public places with a high frequency of reports from old mining communities due to the prostitution trade. Much like the White Lady, the Red Lady or the Lady in Red has a lot of famous sightings. In the UK, Leap Castle is claimed to be haunted by a Red Lady who's holding a dagger, and it's reported that she committed suicide after being captured and raped. On the historic site of Greenbank House in Glasgow, Scotland, a Lady in Red is said to haunt the garden with a large phantom dog and a lady in red is said to walk around the Church of St. Nicholas in Pluckley, England. Now, this one, again, you can find more about if you go and watch my Pluckley Advent Calendar episode. In Thailand, there's a story of a red lady that's believed to be a spirit who drowned in the Bang Pakong River. Witnesses claim to see her while driving their cars across the bridge of the Bang Pakong River at night. And in Canada, Vancouver is said to be home to a spirit named Jenny Pearl Cox, a socialite who died in a car accident in 1944 by the doors of the Fairmont Hotel. Also in Canada, the first Ontario Concert Hall, informally known as Hamilton Place in Hamilton, Ontario, said to be haunted by a lady in red that also weeps red tears. This spirit's been reported by both staff and theatre-goers. Down in the United States of America, Truckee, California features a lady in red on their ghost walks. In Palm Springs, California, a lady in red is said to frequent the spot of her death outside of Corakia Pension, a Moroccan-styled inn once known as Dharma Rock, an exclusive stopover for the likes of Winston Churchill, Rudolph Valentino and Errol Flynn. Blake Street Vault in Denver is said to have a resident lady in red, referred to as Lydia, who was a saloon girl from the 1860s. She's allegedly seen in the shadows of its basement and the sound of her high heels walking across the floorboards. Lydia is said to have been murdered by an enraged male patron of the saloon, while one of the stories explains she was pushed down the staircase. In San Antonio, Texas, at the St. Anthony Hotel, reports of a lady in red held that she enters the woman's restroom, clicks her heels against the marble, and sits in a stall before vanishing. So it seems that the lady in red is more of a friendly 
But Jilted Ghost, again, fairly commonly seen as that of a wronged woman, potentially a prostitute or a murdered woman. Whereas The Lady in White is much more heartbroken and uh, romantic, potentially looking for children. But I just thought it was interesting that there was this entire spectrum of different coloured lady ghosts, all of which share several common themes, specifically sharing the elements of their hauntings being reasonably similar, as well as being used as folklore tales to scare children. As you know, I do a lot of paranormal investigation, and when I do, I like to be comfortable, which is why I wear clothing from allegedlypossiblymaybe.co.uk. With a wide range of high-quality clothing available for low prices, I strongly recommend checking out their website and buying some clothes. If you enjoy quality clothing, visit allegedlypossiblymaybe.co.uk and use discount code TEPIS at checkout to save 10% on your order. Okay, so up next, we are going to go on to the Tepes Paranormal Talking Point Podcast News Review. In this segment, in this segment, I'm going to go over four headlines that I found online about various paranormal things going on around the world. First up, I have a headline from The Daily Record, which reads, Toddler pulled under bed by ghost as dad captures creepy footage. So, essentially, this article consists of footage from a camera in a baby's bedroom that shows a little girl playing. Suddenly something fairly chilling happens. The girl seems to begin crawling under her bed as if looking for something, and then suddenly out of nowhere gets pulled underneath in what the father is saying can't be her simply crawling. It looks like she's being dragged under. Now, I'm looking at it and she does move very suddenly um, without any real you know, movement from her to be crawling. It's a very strange video. Obviously, footage from baby cameras is normally fairly creepy anyway, purely because it's it's dark and you know night vision uh, but yeah she she seems to go from looking under the bed to crawling under the bed at which point she begins to become panicked and starts crying for her mummy to come and help her so yeah it's a weird video i don't really know what it is i don't yeah i don't know if she crawls underneath or if she's pulled she may potentially get pulled it looks like there's an element of force being applied that's dragging her underneath i'm not sure if you've seen the footage please let me know what you think in the comments on youtube secondly we have from the mirror spooky childlike figure photographed by headmaster sends chills down spine. Bill Bradbury, a former head teacher, photographed what appears to be a ghostly child under Victoria Hall, a 121-year-old building in Bolton, Greater Manchester. Now, the principle of this picture is that someone's taken a photo that they claim shows a ghostly child. I personally have looked at this picture multiple times and can't see anything. I don't know if it's just me, I'm not sure, but yeah, I've looked several times, I can see nothing. There's a circled area where they're claiming the ghostly figure is, and I really just don't see it at all if it's the bit that i think they're looking at then this ghostly child is about seven foot tall and yeah i i'm just not buying it personally and i'm not really convinced uh again please feel free to go have a look at this picture and let me know what you think because i'm very interested to know the third headline we've got is one of the most interesting ones here and it's a grandma who spots a demon standing over her grandchild's bed after the top told it to go away so tori mckenzie claims a camera placed in her grandchild's bedroom captured the image of a figure with a a horn on its head and long claws standing over their beds at 3am. The picture itself is terrifying. It appears to show a humanoid figure stood upright with what appears to be horns on its head and claws. It, it doesn't seem to be wearing clothes. It seems to all be one consistent colour and it's more of a mass than a figure. It looks almost misty or smoky. It's obviously it's grey but everything's grey because it's night vision. And yeah it seems to have horns and I don't know. If it's fake it's well done but at the same time I feel like it would be fairly easy to fake. I don't know. This, I don't know. This one intrigues me. I'm really not sure because it's the sort of thing that could be faked but at the same time I don't know necessarily if this grandmother would have faked it. So this figure was captured after the two-year-old in the room was heard pleading go away after she'd been put to bed. That was when the camera was put in after that event and this is what it captured. The grandmother has attempted to rid the home of the evil presence by burning oils but claims when she did cabinets and curtains opened and closed and music began to play by itself. This sounds like a demonic entity. Again, I'm unsure and would love to know more. Um, 
further investigation would be needed to confirm or to debunk the claims but the picture itself is quite stunning and is very interesting again please look it up and let me know what you think finally we've got ghost hunters who capture moment music box moves by itself in a 170 year old pub now this is quite simple it's a video with an element of night vision that shows a music box on a table and during the video for a about 20 seconds the music box begins to slowly turn. The video could be faked, um, it would be fairly easy to fake but the investigators themselves have claimed that it isn't. If this is legitimate again it's an incredible piece of footage in the paranormal world that would strongly hint towards something manipulating the box. I, in my opinion, it's quite impressive. Again if they haven't faked it, which I have no idea if they have or haven't, and based on the video I don't know. If they haven't, then it is quite interesting. And again, I would love to know more about the location and more about the box itself. But for now, that comes to the end of the podcast. I've been Scott from Tepes Paranormal. This has been the Tepes Paranormal Talking Point Podcast, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.